day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, this is part D for the Bible study we had on the 28th of June. I hope you enjoyed that Bible study. It was long. We covered a lot of political points. And, and I was trying to, but the best thing I was trying to do was trying to get people to understand we need to incorporate how Jesus would do it, how God would do it. You know, we're talking about the, the, the dealing with the cops and we're talking about the, 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 the being beat up and knocked down and and all the things that can happen and encounter with police. And we talk about the youth and the standards and all these protests. It's all about trying to address those atrocities, address those those, uh, those wrongs. And, and we were talking about the fact that how, how, how would we do that? Because one was trying to say fight or flight. And I said, there's another option. How about it's the way Jesus did? What I'm saying? And did, matter of fact, uh, I start off with Mark 8.31. I want to read this to you. And it said, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. And when he turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. The one of the things I'm saying is that if we are mindful of the things of men, we are basically in the way of Christ, not going his way. And just like he told Peter, get behind me, Satan. If you are mindful of, 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 of what the world, excuse me, if you're mindful of white supremacy, if you're mindful of black power, if you're mindful of, 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 of political power, uh, uh, parties, and if you're mindful of nationalism, if you're mindful of those things, you're not mindful of the things of God, because God is not looking at us as a party, God is not looking at us as a race, God is looking at us as an image of Him. And being the image of him is to conform toward him. I put one of the scriptures I told them in Romans 12, 2. It was talking about be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to renew our mind to the things of God. And we have to do things the way Jesus did it. Some of you are sitting there who good encounter police officers, and you sit there and you, you choose the options of fight or flight. How about the option of just compliant? and take your case to the judge. Don't fight. Don't, don't, don't sit there and, and, and try to plead your case to the man who don't care, who listen, he, he does not even listen to you. And he's sitting there, if, you, if you're sitting there still trying to talk to somebody who said, I need backup, you know, you, you need to just, just be quiet. You just said, man, here, <laughs> you want to, Take me in, take me in. God bless. I talk to the judge. I'm, I'm not. Obviously, I don't need to talk to you. I'm not getting anywhere with you. So, do what you got to do. Here, here, here's my hand. Take it. There you go. Submit it. You don't need to have a whole bunch of people gang jumping on you. Like, here you go. Let's go. Let's go talk to the judge. Don't don't give people an excuse to to sit there and let me pile on you. Let's get a whole bunch. And look, and you know, and we're talking about the fact that people are tasing you and this and this. Put your hand out your back and they stand on you and all on you, you know, all over you and everything. He's like, I can't. Because you're holding me down. And that's what we need to look at too. Do what Jesus did. When he was arrested on the, the night he was betrayed and and he was carried around from one place to that. He didn't he didn't sit there and talk to his the, the, the guards and say, Let me go, man. Why are you taking me? <laughs> he didn't do that. 
And even when he got in front of the corruption of judges and anything else, he didn't say nothing until he suddenly had to deal with the answer of being uh, the son of man or the son of God. You know that? Think about it. If you are pulled over, if you're walking, if the man rubbed and grabbed you because he in his mind thinking that you have done something that he got the wrong person, just submit. Because the other options is not going to work because they're going to bring more people, they're going to jump on you. That ain't doing nothing. So that's what we talked about. And we're going to talk about it next Sunday too because I think the point is that some of us have said that can't be the answer. Well, if we go by what Christ was saying and saying is the, the, the Son of Man must suffer many things. It's not to say he's saying that I'm telling you that's what I want you to do. It's just the fact that if you do it and bear fruit according to the will of God, it's irrelevant about how people do what they got to do. If you're going to die for being right, then be right dying. You know what I mean? Don't sit there and fight those people that, that don't want to listen to you. It ain't worth it. Let the, matter of fact, just like the George Floyd situation, when he was totally uh, under control and they stand on his neck and, and, his, and his back and his legs and, and they're still talking, get up, man. You will get up, man. You'll get in that car, man. And, and the man killed him. And it caused a world reaction. I'm saying to say, just get in. If they're going to have you, let them have you. They want your ID, give them your ID. Because the alternative is, they don't give you, you don't give them the ID. They sit there and escalate it. And the next thing you know, if you don't watch out. I mean, I saw one video where a guy was picking up trash, hit a trash thing. <laughs> it, was a, it was a handle and it was used to pick up trash because that was his assignment. And the guy sit there and say, that's a weapon. I'm telling you, the, the, those people, the ones that are bad, just you need to understand, don't give them any reason. Give them your ID, answer their questions. If, they need, if you, they're not satisfied with the answers, say, what do I need to do to satisfy the answer? Do we need to go to the police station? What, what, what do you need? You tell me. Because I, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm just trying to do the best I can. And obviously you feel I'm threatened or the color, the color of my skin, my skin is a weapon. You you sit there. I seen one situation where a little kid, a Hispanic kid was killed because he had um, <clears throat> the edges to cut the, uh, trim the bushes. And they were bugging him, bothering him, threatening him. And he, he sit there and I guess he, he, he was like, basically stay away from me with the edgers. And he shot him, he killed him, and said that was a weapon. And he made a move. And that's because he made a move toward them, they shot him. <sighs> Don't give the enemy a place. Don't give the enemy an excuse. I think the fact that it's more effective <clears throat> when you allow, and, and just hope, make sure they got the camera on, don't fight them. Let the videotape speak for itself. But if you fight them, now it goes into another whole level. You, if you're going to be apprehended, be apprehended. Running ain't going to do anything. Fighting them ain't going to do anything. Do what Jesus did. Jesus didn't run. <laughs> Jesus didn't fight him. Jesus answered when he needed to answer the questions. But Jesus didn't sit there and try to plead with his captors. Don't do it as well. Just remember, you're children of God. And focus on that. Amen? All right. I hope you enjoyed this part D. And uh, we may have <laughs> quite a few others because we stay, I think we stayed till 11 o'clock. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Amen. God bless. Bye bye. I like the fact is, brother, as what you saw though is, and I agree with you, is that the the others in the group, if you looked at that protest, and you looked at when you know I'm talking about the photo ops again, did you see how the police reacted to all people in that in that protest, right? They didn't care whether you're white or black, did they? No. Matter they, of fact, they had chat more white than they did black. I mean, because you saw it, right? You saw it. Yeah. It was right on national uh, TV. I mean, because that, that white girl, that definitely sticks out to me most. 
was they, you know, they slammed on the ground. She tried to get up and they pushed her back down. And, and, and it's just, you know, so they're fighting something because it's impacting them too. Exactly, because here's the thing. They have finally, a lot of the, the young ones are, are disenfranchised, but they're going to be left for them. That's yeah. a minute. 30, 30 years, 100 years. Then it moves on to something else. The United States of America is a rising and falling nation, but every nation has risen and fallen in the in the world. That's how it goes. The way the system is set up, who has the greatest amount of power is the one that's going to rule. It's all of them are not. They are set up to be temporal. The only system that is perfect and the one that lasts forever is the kingdom of God. So our purpose is to pull people out of these world systems. And you said we. The we in our situation is the body of Christ. Exactly. We are the strongest thing on the planet. Amen. And we've been here, no government has su su no government has survived an onslaught by the kingdom of God. Once we begin to move, and, and the funny thing about it is it's a nonviolent approach. Yes. The approach that we use, we love folk. They, we love the hell out of them. <laughs> and and yeah, we love them until they change. You know what I'm saying? We gain them like that. Yeah, but Brother Johnson, let me let back back to what Brother Allison was talking about and another thing. I have a fault with how like you say, until we organize, until we get our economics together, until we all form together as one. But what the first thing we do? We as blacks go in the dog on supposed to be a, a together organization. Who divides up the black folks more than anything on this whole planet? Liquor stores and churches. There's 8,653 different churches in a black community. There's no need for that. So when so we all doing oh. the same thing, there's no need for that. When you look at that, we do it all the time. Well, if we look so, at it from the kingdom perspective, that's okay. alleviated. We, we, we'll we'll so, change that. We, so which goes back to what I'm saying. So so do all all the black leaders or, or all the black church? Does the black church need to come on one accord? Yes, but no. We're gonna argue about money. We're gonna argue about who church the biggest. We're gonna do all this. We're gonna fight amongst ourselves. But once again, like you said, all these so-called Christian organizations, like I tell you, I don't consider myself a Christian because of what they are. They Christians. I ain't that. Yeah, I think. What we're looking at is, is, is there's a pretty sizable difference between being a Christian and a disciple of Christ. And, and, and that, that is where we're really finding the difference is that a disciple of Christ will and had overcome his own issues uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. We are united in Christ by his spirit. We move in accordance with him because his sheep hear his voice and another day will not follow. So our committee meetings really... Uh, already settled before we get there because we all been talking to the Lord. The problem that exists in the kingdom right now is the fact that we're not. We have been following each other. We've been following doctrine, but we have not had no face-to-face -face conversation with the Lord himself who was saying, this is what I want y'all to do. And, and just like when we marched, they, they, we all got the same message at the same time and we all turned in concert with one another because we all listened to one voice. So when the body of Christ begins to do that, I think one of the things, if, and I'm going I'm to I'm I'm hush at this point, but one thing that God showed us was that no matter what the world's plan was, he has agents about that can change the whole world in a few minutes. He has little bitty viruses that we can't even see, and he's shut the whole world down with it. So do we have the power? Are we, in, are we really hooked up with the power base? Yes. <laughs> Nobody's going to outdo God. Not Mr. Trump, not the Republicans, not the Democrats, not anybody. God is in control. The issue becomes with us is that we have to embrace each other as black, white, red, yellow, orange, green. If you are of the body of Christ and you are sold out in accordance with what he just said, what do you have to give up? Everything. Give up everything and follow me. And when we're able to do that, we're going to see the manifestation of the kingdom. We're not being prosecuted or persecuted in the United States of America. We're ineffective. The white church is divided from the black church. The black church is, is, is going with the Democrats. The white church is going with the Republicans, which is totally ridiculous. The house of the divided against itself will not stand, first off. And second off, the world can't fix itself, so how are they going to help us fix this thing? We are supposed to be their fix. Hey, hey, I think the point was that uh, Brother Jackson got something to say. But just to let you know is that the we're, Brother Chris is right in the sense of not coming together as one 
a still seeking vain glory, which is who's in charge, who got the biggest church, all that is vain glory. It is. That, and Chris, I'm just saying that's that's my whole point is we're trying to go off the glory that that is vain, right? Vanity has no has really has nothing but keep us down. Nobody gonna get instead seen of that. coming as one for justice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Bro, Jackson, what you gotta say? Oh, I I had just put it on the uh, the post there that uh, you know in the Old Testament. The principle of following God's word, following his commandments is something that he repeated over and over and over again with the children of Israel. And then, of course, that applies to everyone else as we take it into the New Testament, into the into the covenant that we have. Uh, the bottom line is we know we're not going to save everybody. But as we've said many times in the past, just like with this small group here, if we, we can't necessarily overcome the, the, the corrupt system. But what we can do is be the light that we need to be out there in the world yep. and share the gospel message for those who are willing and those who will yield to it and, and go that route. Um, you know, one indication of, of we know that how things can happen is, is when a king and Gandhi, when they use peace, was, even though there, sometimes it got worse before it got better, uh, being peaceful, humbling ourselves, um, showing love, that tends to overcome the system um, in, a, in, a, in a dramatic kind of way, but we don't want to do that. And um, if we don't want to do that, then we're just going to continue to do things uh, and get the same results. Uh, you know, we've been talking about, you know, kingdoms rising and falling and, and this and that and the other. Well, you know, we, we've got some historical uh, proof of that. We don't even have to go through all the other history books. We've got it in our own word right here. It says, hey, if you do what you're supposed to do, if we do what we're supposed to do, then the eternal benefits are what we need to be looking at, not these temporary things. And I'll be honest with you, you know, um, you guys are much more educated in some of these things. Every time we get together, I learn something <laughs> about what's going on here in the world. Uh, but. But that's the way I'm looking at it. I I, uh, I already know whether it be my white brothers, whether it be my black brothers, whether it be my Indian brothers, whether it be my South American brothers. I already know. Hey, it is too many of them guys out there that they, they can care less about uh, uh, what, what I'm talking about. However, the ones who, when we talk about winning souls, uh, being on the right side of, 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 of what Christ talked about, that's kind of where where my head is at while I'm listening to all of this you know because I can get caught up in these uh, and I've had people with conversation they've called me up and said hey man what's going on about this what about that you know what you try to talk to them and uh opinions are already made it, it don't make a difference what you say you know but when you come at them with the word a lot of times they mumble you know a lot of times they don't even know how to handle that because when it comes to the truth Ain't nothing they can do. Now, they can accept it or not accept it. Right. We already know what the consequences are of that. So that's that's just kind of where I'm I'm at. And and fellas and, and ma'am, we it's right, it's the truth. We got so much power. We we've seen it. The the interesting thing is, is like you said, we got somebody over here, you know, got us looking in one direction when we should be looking over here at Christ. And yes. that's not what we're doing. But that's the simple answer. And that's all I'm saying when I put that up there. What does it say? Uh, just like in the garden, Satan is using love to get our minds off God. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I don't, I'm going to I'm have to look at that one, brother. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at that one. I, I, I love that because, you know, and, and, and the reason why I say that is it's hard to look at people, any, any race, being abused. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it really is. It's hard to, to look at anyone being murdered for no reason, whether they be black, white, red, yellow, it doesn't matter. When people of authority abuse a person and they, they murder that person, it's, it's hard to see that. Right. It's hard to take. But when it is a person of color, especially when you have children of color and you see that despite what they do 
no matter how much they follow the rules, how much you teach them how to to respect these officers and stuff, and they you see people still being murdered by and they follow the direction that you give your kids, it affects you and it gets your mind off of Christ because right. your love for those individuals you connect with that because you connect with man this could happen to my child yeah but see you know I, I I hear you and I'm gonna be honest with you if something happened to my kids and you know we talked about this right I already told you about something happened to my kids somebody arrest me first and then give me the news because my flesh my flesh may you know overcome and, right and that's my point but but, but what we've also said is then what I need to do is, is then yield to the spirit because revenge is mine, saith the Lord. And when the we Lord is in me. So me revenging is the Lord revenging. <laughs> I see you playing with words. Now. I'm just, I was just, I was just talking, man. No, 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 no. Let me hit you with something. Let me hit you with something. Go ahead, go ahead. What the, what the bro was talking about? Did y'all? I know it, it ain't a lot going on on ESPN right now, but did y'all see that thing when uh that analyst Ryan Clark got on there crying because his son was go to Arizona State University. His son went to go to like Burger King somewhere and wanted something to eat. Well, they only were, were giving the stuff through the drive-through. So they didn't have a car because they live right next to the campus. They walked to the Burger King. They walk up to a car after the folks said, we can only give you something through. They walk up to a car and ask the two white folks in there to order, order them some food. So the next thing come out, them white folks is blank you, N word this, da 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 da, and all this here stuff. So now he's distraught. They call, they're getting ready to call the cops on these kids and all that stuff. I'm going to shorten the story now, but it gets to the simple fact that Ryan Clark, black guy, he's over there, the white folks in the car, you know, in the car, and his son. The thing I want y'all to continue to do with what he was going through, y'all need to watch it, is he was on there crying because since he put his son in all these affluent schools and his son to doing all this here, he felt that he did not equip his son to go out and deal with the racism that's going on every day in the world. And then my one thing I was going to ask y'all is, we seem to having this nice discussion. Did y'all need to talk about any of this with y'all kids? Did y'all bring up like about black history, about what black folks have done and how this system has, has tried to always downplay us? We talked about it now. But the kids out there, those are the ones you should have been talking to. Like you said, you had to talk with your kids about how to act when a cop gets tried to get you. Did we teach them right? We know what we know how they're supposed to act. We did we teach them to survive, and did we teach them other knowledge like what is right, so they can have like I said, being black in America is a two hat thing. Sometimes yeah, Chris, you teach them, and they follow your instructions, and they still get murdered. Well, the, that's why well, I keep telling. Yeah, I, that's why I keep saying all y'all talking about this turn the other cheek. Them kids tired. Look, 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 my, my dad and them did it. I ain't doing it. That's what they're talking if, about if, now. If, if I can put the interject here, is when we teach them to abide in Christ, we teach them to abide in the ark of safety. If we go to Psalm 91 and really believe that he is who he says he is, and this is where it becomes difficult because it takes you turning your well-being over and the well-being of your outgrowth over to a God that you ain't never met, in a sense. You know, it, 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 you should not fear the terror of night, nor the air that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the dark, and not a plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. If he's able to save eight folk and destroy the world, if he's able to save three and wipe out an old city, if he's able to send a virus that you cannot even see and kill over 120 some thousand people, how can you not handle a cop on the streets? So those and those are the kind of things that we that's where we start to we, we we battle there because we vacillate back from the flesh back into the spirit we flesh we spirit and we become unstable the, the, and I, I identify with you I mean I agree with you I got two out there now that I'm constantly worried about in the sense that uh, when I'm trapped getting in the flesh 
but I can't do anything about it physically. So the Lord has restrained me in that regard. So now I gotta go back to the spirit to the same Lord. You gotta be telling the truth. Because you ain't tell the truth, ain't nothing I can do about this. If they get hurt, only thing I do is do the follow-up like Bud Jackson. I'm gonna go kill everything that I can find. <laughs> and, I mean, that's gonna be the attitude. That's what you're gonna want to do. You know? But you can't prevent the action from taking place. So you pray that the <laughs> prayers are legitimate and that God's promise to us is gonna manifest itself. You, you know what I'm saying? But let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Chris, Chris said it, said it, uh, and then Brother Addison. What behavior are you saying is not effective if you operate in love toward a confrontation with the police? Because it sounds like to me that most cases they still try to use, get an excuse to to dominate you, to to yank you out of the car, to, to slam you against something. But if you sit there and do complete compliance, are you saying they still dying? Yes. yes. I just watched the video this morning. Guy was walking down the street. A police officer grabs him and detains him. And then and and a female was start was videotaping. Because he was hollering at. Him. So she started videotaping. And, she, and he goes, do you have this on video? She says, yes. And he goes, why are you detaining me? I didn't do nothing. And the officer held him like this up against the wall. And he waited for help. And he kept saying, why are you detaining me? I did nothing wrong. What are you holding me for? You can't do this. It's against the law. Tell me, why are you holding me? Why are you detaining me? And the officer just kept saying, stay still, don't move, you know, and he goes like this, why are you, I'm not doing anything, why are you detaining me? And so then, because he did like this, the officer pulls his taser out. And he goes, why are you getting ready to tase me? I haven't done nothing, I'm following your instructions. What have I done? Then, a bunch of officers came, cars, you see the cars coming down the street, they all jump out and they just pummel this dude. I'm serious, when I say pummel, mm -hmm. the definition, you, you look Google pummel, and, and yeah, video I mean, they, they dog piled on this dude, they kicked him, they stomped him, they kept saying, you know, get on your back, put your hands behind your back, but they wouldn't let him. And they just stop. You see him stopping them, kicking them, stepping on them, choking them. And he's crying out. He even cried out, Jesus, help me. Oh, wow. You have to, you have to send that to us so we can take a look at it. Hey, hey, hey wait a minute. Let, 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 me, let me, let me, can I interject right there? Uh -huh. if, if you, if, did he survive it? Yes. From, from the video, I don't know what happened to him afterwards. But I do believe because he cried out, they kind of started backing up a little bit. This, but there were still a few people on it. And that, is this but, where I, I, I know it's difficult for me sometimes to get to the point, but this is what I'm, I'm praying for. We got to put it in the hands of the one that can fix it. These people are not above God. If we do our part, I mean, what did Israel people do? And this happened in, in the Civil War. The enemy turned on itself and wiped each other out. Yeah. Hey, hey.